Hi, welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back, and we're going to be joined by Ethan Peck. He's an associate at the Free Enterprise Project, and that is part of the National Center for Public Policy Research. They are just an amazing organization, and we've been getting a lot of guests from them. So I'm, first of all, let me uh, welcome to the show Ethan Peck. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. You came across my radar because you wrote a really good article um, about Klaus Schwab and kind of warning people about it, the grand conspirator. Tell us what that is about. Okay, so Klaus is the founder of the World Economic Forum, which dates back to 1971. And their primary uh, objective is to kind of merge the public sphere and the private sphere to create this conglomerate um, of business and government in order to push for a new kind of social contract forward. Um, and so Klaus is at the helm of this movement, uh, specifically at the corporate level. He's trying to redefine what the purpose of a corporation is and to sort of do all of the communism just from the corporate side instead of from the government side. Um, and he brings together leaders from the world every year at Davos to do this in the sort of open conspiracy. And so I wrote um, about Klaus's role in. I, I want to hear more about that, but I, I have a little clip. I think it was from last spring at the World Economic Forum. And I want you to respond to just this little brief introduction he gives. The future is built by us, by a powerful community as you here in this room. We have the means to improve the states of the world, but two conditions are necessary. The first one is that we act all as stakeholders of larger communities, that we serve not our only self-interests, but we serve the community. That's what we call stakeholder responsibility. Ethan, what a nice guy. Why don't you like him? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, he kind of I he makes me laugh because he kind of reminds me of Dr. Evil from uh yes. Austin yes. Powers. Yeah. And he, yep. he just like he's like a he's like a real life version of a Bond villain. Um and I think that you know basically my article argues that he this guy's head is so far up his own um that yep. he 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 really believes his own nonsense so much that he doesn't think that he's doing evil and that's why he's so open with it. Like he just believes okay, we're going to restructure society according to my view of the world where we're going to replace meat with bugs and uh people are going to sleep in pods and no one's going to own anything and this is literally what they say on their website um and in their speeches and so and he just kind of openly does it and so it's it's comical in a way and it's but most of all it's concerning and it's and it's horrendously evil so i saw a, a clip of a video that he did about a year ago or it might have been two um, but he was talking about their agenda with the World Economic Forum to microchip everyone by mm -hmm. 2026. And they were going to start with clothing, then go to the skin via the brain, and then a fusion of physical, digital, and biological, so that you basically just have to think something and you are going to be connected like with the World Wide Web. Absolutely. Um, they just want to plug us into their matrix. It's actually, they have a name for this. You can, if anyone listening can go on their website, Klaus calls it the fourth industrial revolution, which basically he says in his own words on recording on their website, you can go see a fourth industrial revolution on the World Economic Forum's website right now, which he basically says that the fourth industrial revolution is not just changing what we do in certain, you know, a new wave in the market, but it's changing who we are physically. And like you pointed out, it's, um, biological in terms of like bioengineering and then digital and um technological in terms of like hacking our bodies and all these kinds of wearable devices that they're going to use this is they, they plan to use uh to uh machine learn the data collected from our bodies in order to better program us as people kind of like the way china does in the social credit system but just to a way larger extreme so i the reason i wanted to follow up with that um about two years ago, I watched a movie on um, Amazon Prime. Okay, so it was an Amazon original, and it was called The Feed. And it was exactly describing this. And we always say that Hollywood always predicts what's going to happen. We can go back to Star Trek and the flip phones or the communicators. 
And they were doing exactly that. They had the feed right in their brains, and they had to get some chip taken out of the back of their neck in order to break free. And this is like super scary to me. It's pathological. Yeah, it, it's very scary to me. The, the only thing that gives me hope actually on this front is that I don't, I think personally, I just think that the brain is more complicated than these people think. And I don't think that they're competent enough to actually connect us to the brain in the way that they envision. What really bothers me is their, is their utopian view of the world. That's the same thing. It's the same thing with the communists. They thought, okay, we're just going to have government organize everything so perfectly in society that there's just going to be no waste and it's going to be completely efficient. And this way, everybody will have resources to live a more comfortable life. And then they ran out of food and millions of people starved to death. And so I think that these people who want to program us top down and say, oh, well, it's okay that they're not going to have uh, own anything. We'll just, they'll just rent everything. We'll, we'll be able to provide them with all kinds of different, you know, and I, I just, this is the kind of thing that scares me because of its utopian vision. It, 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 it's unrealistic and, and it's against freedom. Right, and when you say utopian, it's their version of utopia. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. we don't necessarily agree with them. But I want to talk about Klaus. He, he's such a dangerous, like he's this evil character out of a cartoon. You know, it just doesn't even seem like this guy could be real. And mm -hmm. he created the World Economic Forum, and he made himself chairman, and he has mm -hmm. been ever since, right? I mean, where does this guy come from? Where does he get his power? <laughs> That, like okay. he could do something like this. Okay, well, it depends how far you want to go back. But he <laughs> first studied under Henry Kissinger um, before when he was at Harvard okay. in, in before in the 1970s, and he who was a uh, you know council on, a council on foreign relations. And so basically, the World Economic Forum is today what the Council on Foreign Relations was you know 10, 15, 20 years ago, and uh, it was first called the European Management Forum. And Klaus is actually also the son of a prominent Nazi who was uh, heavily involved in developing heavy water for at atomic bombs. And uh, Klaus then sat on the board of his father's company, Escher Weiss, that, who was developing heavy water for the atomic bomb. And then he went to study under Kissinger. And then he developed the European Management Forum to sort of bring forward this corporate idea of communism. This, I, I, his version of stakeholder communism, which is his project, the, the, the World Economic Forum is, is designed to carry out his project of stakeholder capitalism, which is the idea that a corporation is not supposed to share, you know, um, belong to its shareholders or serve its shareholders' interests, but it actually belongs to stakeholders, which is anyone who has a stake. And um, that's, that's, that's kind of what he wants to do. He wants to just do communism from the corporate level. He's kind yeah. of furthering his father's goal with the Nazi party, you know, fast forward into the future here, and you've got, you know, part two here. Um, mm -hmm. Very, very scary, very bizarre. But the, the strange thing is that he would have that kind of influence. And who's, I, well, I want to talk about that when we come back. Who is actually mm -hmm. listening to him and who's fighting against him? So stay with us okay. and we'll be right back.